Good morning. Today we're convening for the first Responder Network Authority's combined board and committee meetings. I'm the new chair of the board, Steve Benjamin. I'm thankful to Secretary Raimondo for this appointment. I want to congratulate all of our newly appointed board members. Several are new to the board and we'll have a chance to do introductions shortly. I want to welcome all of my board colleagues and the First Net Authority team who are here. Thank you for joining today in person and, vir and also virtually for the final board meeting of 2021. We have a limited number of people gathered in person for today's meeting. Due to the restrictions on the number of people who can be present in the room, the public was invited to attend virtually today, and we thank them for their participation as well. Public safety services are integral to the res resiliency and strength of our communities across the country. And for public safety, communication is key to delivering life-saving services and keeping themselves safe. I know this fact firsthand. In addition to serving as mayor of Columbia, South Carolina, I previously served as chief of our state's second largest law enforcement agency, uh, the Department of Probation, Parole, and Pardon Services. It's not long after I left the position as chief that our country was attacked on 9-11. The major challenge that 9-11 highlighted was that first responders couldn't communicate with each other, and this became a driving force creation of FirstNet. Police, fire, EMS, 911, and all the public safety should be able to easily communicate with each other to respond to our community's needs. FirstNet is critical to public safety operations today, and the FirstNet Authority should be commended for the amazing progress it has made to deliver this network for public safety. FirstNet is a success. I look forward to working with all of you as we build upon the success and serve those who keep us safe, our nation's first responders. I'm excited to be a part of this next phase of the network and the work ahead. So let's turn to the business of today's meeting. Today's agenda, we're going to have the opportunity to introduce the new board members and the board committee membership. We're going to make the public aware of the board meeting schedule for calendar year 2022. We're going to announce the recipient of the Chief Holland McEwen Public Safety Broadband Communications Award. We're going to receive a Public Safety Advisory Committee update from the new PSAC Chair, Christopher Lombard. We're going to get advocacy, network and technology, and finance committee updates as well. We're also going to vote on three community, committee resolutions and one board resolution related to changing board committee names. I'm going to ask our board secretary to call the roll for the board and confirm that each committee has a quorum. Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll and then read the conflicts of interest statement. Good morning, I'll mark you as president, present chair. Richard Carrizo. Present. Billy Bob Brown, Jr. Present. Brian Crawford. Present. Alexandra Fernandez Navarro. Present. Kristen Graziano. Present. Billy Hughes. Present. Karima Holmes. Present. Darren Jones. Present. Peter Katujian. Present. Warren Mickens. Present. Sylvia Moyer. Present. Jocelyn Moore. Present. Paul Patrick. Present. Tia Patterson. participating in the First Net Authority combined board and committee's meeting today, the board members have reviewed the agenda as well as the conflict of interest guidance provided by the Ethics, Law, and Program Division of the Department of Commerce Office of General Counsel regarding the conflict of interest standards that apply to the board members. All board members have responded prior to today's meeting that they do not have a conflict and will not need to recuse themselves from participation in any portion of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Each member of the board has before him or her the minutes of our August meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes at this time? Seeing none, I'll take a motion that uh, we receive, accept these minutes. Mr. Chair, motion made. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, I would second that motion. Thank you, Mayor Hughes. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed indicate by saying nay. Okay. Any, okay. any, all right. any abstentions?
questions? All right. Uh, all um, motions passed. August meetings are accepted. Uh, Madam Secretary, please make the minutes available to the public following this meeting. We're going to start this uh, meeting with an introduction of our new board members. I've already uh, had a, a few comments about myself, but we have several new members attending their first quarterly board meeting. I'm just going to take a moment and ask everyone just to give a, 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 a brief introduction into introducing themselves to uh, the community. I am Steve Benjamin. I've had the, the honor and pleasure of serving as uh, the mayor of Columbia, South Carolina, my adopted hometown for the last uh, 12 years, and um, uh, been very active in the community of mayors as president of the Conference of Mayors, as well as African American Mayors Association. And um, I am excited about uh, serving the men and women who run towards danger when everyone else is running in the opposite direction. Uh, this is uh, uh, a sacred trust, and I'm excited about uh, joining each and every one of you. Um, so uh, let's um, uh, go around the table and introduce ourselves. Alexandra, would you start? Good morning. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. My name is Alexandra Fernandez Navarro. I'm a commissioner at the Puerto Rico Public Service Regulatory Board, a telecommunications regulatory attorney by trade. Um, I was in charge of the telecommunication restoration efforts after Hurricane Maria as a telecom, telecom bureau commissioner. And so I understand and know the importance of FirstNet for emergency response in the United States of America. Again, a pleasure and an honor to be here. Christian Graziano, Sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Um, my name is Christian Graziano. I have the honor of serving as sheriff in Charleston County, uh, South Carolina. I am in my first term as sheriff. It is, it is absolutely an honor to be serving amongst this distinguished group of, of professionals. And uh, I'd like to thank the secretary also for that appointment and the opportunity to serve from the public safety sector. Thank you, Sheriff. Sheriff Peter Katujian. Good morning, all. My name is Peter Katujian. I am a former prosecutor, a former legislator with a specialty in health care. Currently, I am the sheriff in Middlesex County in Massachusetts. I'm also currently proudly serving as the president of Major County Sheriffs of America. It's an incredible honor to be able to be here to serve and protect our first responders in our communities. Thank you. Warren Mickens. Good morning. I'm Warren Mickens. I'm a technology executive and occasional consultant. I'm honored to join this board. Uh, it's an opportunity to prove that public and private partnerships can work well, especially in the interests of our first responders who risk their lives every day. Um, I reside outside of Denver, Colorado with my wife of 41 years choice, and we have two adult sons who happen to both be engineers also. I think I've infected them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Sylvia Moyer. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'm Sylvia Moyer. I have 33 years of public safety experience in policing, both in California and in Arizona. Proudly served on the front lines all the way up into the executive office. I'm delighted to be part of this effort to strengthen the way that we serve communities. And I appreciate that the secretary has appointed me to this position. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jocelyn Moore. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jocelyn Moore. I'm here representing the private sector. My background is in corporate affairs. I presently serve on the board of DraftKings and OpFi. But prior to being in corporate America, I served for 15 years in the United States Senate. I was there on 9-11. Subsequently, I worked for Senator Rockefeller after 9-11 and after the upper big branch mining tragedy in West Virginia, as he worked tirelessly to bring FirstNet to life. And so this is really a full circle moment. I am tremendously honored to serve with all of you uh, to do our very best on behalf of public safety. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Uh, as you can tell, we're um, all excited to uh, join the team uh, to move this organization uh, forward as part of the First Net Authority Board. Uh, we're thankful for the relationships we're building uh, with the other board members and the First Net staff. Um, as a board chair, I'm responsible for naming the uh, board vice chair, the board committee chairs, and the membership of, of, of each committee. I've asked uh, Chief Carrizo, Richard Carrizo, to continue serving as, as board uh, vice chair, and, and he has agreed to do so. So thank you, uh, Richard. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it and look forward to serving with you. For thank, thank you so much. I look forward to working with you. 
I'm also pleased to announce that Sylvia Moya uh, is going to be chair of the Governance and, and Personnel Committee. And Jocelyn Moore has accepted chair in the of the Network and Technology Committee. Uh, Rich Carrizo will, will continue to serve as chair of the Advocacy Committee. And Brian Crawford is going to continue as chair of the Finance uh, Committee. Um, we have the full uh, membership for each uh, committee listed here on, on this slide. Uh, the mix of talent and expertise in each committee will be helpful for uh, each committee's work and the, and the work with the board as a whole. So I really want to thank all of you for your willingness uh, to serve and, and look forward to your individual con contributions and working closely with the committees to advance our mission. Um, looking ahead, uh, the board meeting schedule has been established for the upcoming uh, calendar year. Uh, the board will meet once a quarter in February, May, August, and November. Uh, the August meeting will include the board's approval of the fiscal year 2023 budget. Uh, information about these meetings will continue to be made available in the Federal Register Notice and on the FirstNet.gov website. Now we're going to um, uh, shift over and, and uh, announce the, um, the recipient of the Chief Holland R. McEwen Public Safety Broadband Communications Award. And, um, I'm uh, privileged to name the recipient of uh, First Net Authority's uh, Chief Harlan McEwen Public Safety Broadband Communications Award today, and I'm going to turn this over to Chief uh, uh, Carrizo, Vice Chair Carrizo, to announce this year's award. Thank you, sir. Uh, this year it's an honor to uh, announce the Harlan McEwen Award. This award was created in 2017 to honor our first chair of the PSAC. Uh, this was a gentleman that uh, actually had helped begin First Net and was named as first chair. I uh, consider Harlan a, a good friend and ho hopefully Harlan is listening as we announce the new winner this year as uh, I do believe he'll be just as honored to uh, help give this award to the recipient. Uh, this year the First Net Authority and Board are honored to award the Harlan R. McEwen Public Safety Broadband Communications Award to Chief Mike Dyke. Chief Dyke is the retired fire chief of the Tualatin Valley Oregon Fire and Rescue Department. He served there for 30 years been a PSAC chair member representing the Metro Fire Chiefs Council for several years. He also serves as the executive member for the last three years. He's also represented the Metro Chiefs on the SACOM and presently still works for the NG 911 Public Safety uh, Coalition that is uh, continuing to work towards the NG 911 legislation. His leadership in the early years of securing D Block for public safety, educating the fire services about the importance broadband communications capabilities and continual support of FirstNet Authority and the PSAC have been very important contributions to get us where we are today. Thank you to those who have supported his work, who nominated him, and thank you Chief Dyke for all that you have done. Chief Dyke, I'll turn it over to you if you're online right now uh, to make a few remarks. I am. Uh, good morning and thank you uh, to the Board of Directors uh, FirstNet I'm uh, truly honored by this award, and uh, and it's it's been amazing to reflect on uh, where we were before the legislation was passed and where we are today. I've had the unique um, opportunity to actually participate during the advocacy, as Chief Grizzo said, for uh, the D Block being there, actually in Washington D.C. when the legislation was signed, uh, and then. Uh, chaired the committee for the state of Oregon that developed the state plan and, and then uh, oversaw the build out across the state as we saw across all 56 states and territories. This was all done, uh, you know, with, by public safety for public safety. And uh, it's an amazing effort and uh, it's great to see where it is today. Now, as a member of PSAC, as they have been uh, for the last several years uh, under under now the new leadership of Chief Lombard. Uh, it's an exciting group, it's very talented, and, uh, and the speed in which enhancements for public safety are taking place is, is just phenomenal. Um, I recall, uh, I think it was in 2018, when we decided to stand up from strike teams to speed the information and enhancements to public safety, we decided telehealth, where we connected through the FirstNet network responders on scene with medical uh, expertise, advanced uh, positions, uh, rather than take them to the hospital to speed their acute care. Uh, little did we know that when COVID struck, struck 
uh, how important this would be. It's just uh, an example of how quickly things have moved and how fortunate we are in public safety to have this network. So my thanks to you, uh, the board, the First Knit Authority, for making all this possible. And uh, and it's truly an honor to receive uh, the, the Harlan McCurran Teaching Award this year. So thank you so much. Net Authority and board members for having me today. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Chris Lombard. I've been recently appointed as the newest PSAC chair and I'm happy to serve in this role. I've served as the PSAC member for many years, since the board's inception actually. I look forward to working with the First Net Authority board and leadership and my fellow PSAC members on how the PSAC can offer its expertise to enhance the First Net network. Next slide. It has been a busy fall for us in the PSAC. Here are a few updates of the recent PSAC work and some engagements for the board. On October 26th, the PSAC hosted its annual bi-monthly, I'm sorry, its bi-monthly webinar. During this webinar, PSAC members received an overview of quality of service, priority, and preemption, and the evolution of cellular communication. In addition, the FirstNet Authority showcased a live demonstration of the FirstNet Authority Lab in Boulder, Colorado on how the prioritization and preemption on the network is tested during the public safety scenarios. Kenzie Capiz and the First Net Authority legal team updated the PSAC members and proceed on procedures to comply with the Don't Break Up the T-Band Act of 2020, which states that any state or taxing jurisdiction identified by the Federal Communications Commission as engaging in diversion of 911 fees and charges is ineligible to participate on or send representatives to serve as a member of the PSAC. This administrative update is critical to remain compliant with the federal rules, but as of now does not negatively impact any of our current PSAC members. Additionally, we had some PSAC membership updates since the last board meeting. As noted, I have been elected as the chair or appointed as the chair uh, for the PSAC. In addition, Chief Brian Schaefer from the National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians and Sean Tomich from the National Governors Association were selected to serve on the PSAC Executive Committee. I'm also excited to welcome our newest PSAC members, Jeff Cohen from the Association of Public Safety Communications Officials International, or APCO, and Brad Stoddard from the National Council of Statewide Interoperability Co Coordinators, NICSWIC. We look forward to their leadership and membership on the PSAC as it carries out its mission to assist the First Net Authority. The Tribal Working Group had a good year of work collaborating virtually again in 2021. The TWG delegates have identified subject matter experts on one or multiple of the eight FirstNet Authority Roadmap domain technologies that have been incorporated into the database. The purpose of this database is to provide the Roadmap Development Division contact information for future focus groups. Delegates reviewed and provided suggested edits to outreach to tribal government guidance and tribes and first nets frequently asked questions documentation delegates and first net authority staff support the updating of the tribal working group webpage on the first net authority website the updates included additional information about the twg and updated delegate headshots the page is now consistent and mirroring the PSAC page the PSAC ICAM strike team completed its tasking from the First Net Authority to provide public safety expertise on ICAM's influence on applications heavily used by public safety. ICAM, of course, refers to identity, credentialing, and access management. The ICAM strike team met several times to discuss the types of applications used by public safety and the best practices or best approaches for prioritizing potential inclusion into the First Net ICAM ecosystem. These inputs and the group's expertise offered insights into the important application and database solutions for public safety, potential challenges, and other considerations 
for broad ICAM adoption. The input and results have been outlined in the PSAC ICAM strike team applications input report, which was finalized in October. During the COVID-19 pandemic, telehealth services helped patients and medical providers connect in real time in a safe setting. Considering this, the PSAC telehealth strike team re-examined the widespread adoption of telehealth services and identified emergency, um, emerging telehealth case studies that may save lives, streamline medical services, and ensure quality patient care. This information was collected through a web-based web survey that was distributed to EMS providers to gather insight on the current uses of telehealth in the pre-hospital environment. These case studies are highlighted in a recently published blog on firstnet.gov written by National EMS Management Association PSAC representative and telehealth strike team chairman, John Olson. I had the pleasure of working with both of these strike teams this year and appreciate both Frank's leadership in ICAM and John's leadership in telehealth. As we look ahead to 2022, the PSAC has identified areas of focus as priorities in the upcoming year. This includes conducting reviewing in-person uh, PSAC and TWG meetings, leveraging user working group membership for future focus groups, and formulating new strike teams. Lastly, the PSAC plans to focus on expanding outreach, partnerships, conducting engagements with stakeholders. It should be a fun year. Thank you all again, and we look forward to continued great work of the PSAC in 2022. I'm happy to answer any questions or take any comments for, uh, or feedback from board members. Thank you so much, Chief, and Chris, I look forward to um, working with you uh, very closely. Um, now we're going to get an update uh, from the Advocacy Committee. I'll turn this over to, to the Vice Chair and also the Chair of the Advocacy Committee, Richard Carrizza. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the appointment uh, on this wonderful committee and excited to continue my role as the Advocacy Chair. This committee is very important. It's where we ensure that public safety's voice is heard loud and clear throughout the First Net organization and represented in the build-out and evolution of the first net. Again, our job is to listen to the first responders and determine what their needs are. It has been an honor to hear from public safety how the first net network is improving their operations on a daily basis. And we're also continuing to hear about their operational needs that still need to be addressed for first responders. In September, I was fortunate to travel with the first net authority team for the International Wireless Communications Expo in Las Vegas. Connecting in person with our stakeholders across public safety, government, industry, and academia, as well as hearing firsthand from public safety about their recent successful incorporation of FirstNet and incident responses. I got to sit on many great sessions that the First Authority put on. Uh, these included FirstNet Push to Talk and the evolution of mission critical services, current and future communication challenges, a roadmap for the future of FirstNet, building resilience around disaster response in 2021 and beyond, and FirstNet in action with responding to emergencies and pandemic. In addition, along with uh, CEO Parkinson, we met with the presidents of the 10 states and Pacific Islands who represent the leadership of the Western Fire Chiefs Association at their President's Forum last week in Phoenix, Arizona. We had many productive conversations and, oh, excuse me, and successful scheduled follow-up meetings that we will continue to look into on this to help them. We've had other advocacy committee members on the road as well. Paul Patrick participated in the EMS World Expo last month in Atlanta. He spoke with a lot of the stakeholders that stopped by the first net booth. Appreciate that. Paul. Harry Markley, our law enforcement senior advisor from the market engagement team office, attended the annual committee meetings for the International Association of Chiefs of Police annual conference, which ended up being virtual after the hurricane in September. We're looking forward to getting to more conferences in person in the future. At this point, I'll turn it over to Jackie Miller, our Acting Chief Market Engagement Officer, to provide more information about our engagement accomplishments. Thank you, Chief DeCruzzo. As you noted, the Advocacy Committee is where we ensure that public safety's voice is heard loud and clear throughout the FirstNet Authority organization and our partner to impact enhancements to the FirstNet network. In turn, the Market Engagement Office team is crucial to our organization's success as we help ensure that public safety's voice is captured, assembled, and channeled to appropriately inform all relevant parties. We focused on three main activities to achieve our goals. 
First, we focus on building and enhancing key stakeholder relationships across all disciplines at the local, state, territorial, tribal, and federal government levels, as well as with industry and academia. Just a few statistics from 2021. Our team engaged across all 56 states and territories with all disciplines with nearly 1,700 engagements. We reached more than 40,000 stakeholders through numerous engagement types, whether it was a one-on-one -on -one engagement, multi-agency or regional engagements, as well as major national level conferences. As an example, um, we were able to educate audiences and extract critical information from many first responders in the form of operational needs and product feedback um, and how FirstNet is impacting their operations. We captured over 2,100 unique fee feedback items from public safety through our engagement efforts. The data feeds into our organization's processes and will help us improve the network. Second, we're focused on sharing the FirstNet experience. We promote for public safety by public safety on our website and we share stories of how public safety entities have integrated FirstNet into their operations. We do that through blogs, podcasts, webinars, and, and other information you can access on our website. We want to ensure that our stakeholders not only know the latest FirstNet updates, but also can hear from their peers what is working in the most effective in, in, a, in any given environment. For example, our blog, recently published, um, we have a case study from Indiana County Emergency Management Agency, which is, the, which is northeast of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. The ICEMA is responsible for overseeing emergency management throughout the county. It is also unique in that it oversees the county's 911 emergency communications operations, coordinating call handling and dispatching for the county's 24 fire departments and two EMS providers, uh, as well as five municipal police departments. Indiana County and ICMA joined FirstNet in 2019 to ensure personnel could communicate via voice across the country to fill coverage gaps. Since then, ICMA has extended its use of the network, purchasing additional equipment to enable FirstNet connectivity in the county's mobile command post and other vehicles. It also encouraged other public safety entities to use FirstNet. For example, the Indiana County Sheriff's Office joined FirstNet, utilizing laptops and police cars they're now connected to, through FirstNet, enabling deputies to access critical information while in the field. It served a significant time, it saved significant time for, our, for deputies as they previously had to return to the station or use their radios to request additional information. ICEMA is now working on the ability to provide more exact location data to first responders using FirstNet. In addition, the agency is working with EMS agencies in the county to understand how FirstNet can benefit their operations. Additionally, our, temp, our team spent a significant amount of time and effort this year working with stakeholders on several significant incidents. These incidents provided the opportunity for the FirstNet Authority to review and analyze FirstNet's use, operational gaps experienced by first responders with respect to broadband communications and potential solutions to address those needs. Some of those events included the Western Wildland Fires, the Nashville bombing incident, Winter Storm Uri weather events, um, and, and Hurricane Ida. These incidents re resulted in communication successes and challenges, as well as identification of best practices and suggestions and considerations for mit mitigating persistent challenges moving forward. In almost all of these incidents, the most common success was the importance of stakeholder relationships with the FirstNet Authority, namely our market engagement office team and our partner, AT&T. Many stakeholders link their successful deployment of FirstNet capabilities to these existing relationships. And third, we focused on informing FirstNet product and network enhancements based on public safety and other key stakeholder feedback. We know that it's critical for our team to continue to elicit, capture, and represent the first responder community's feedback. As I mentioned earlier, our team collected more than 2,100 items of feedback, ranging from operational needs to current uses of FirstNet technologies and various applications and devices to challenges and issues. For example, the Market Engagement Office team continued to support the organization's need to collect public safety input across the different roadmap domains. The detailed feedback that operational and operational needs supported the evolution of priorities to specific opportunities for the FirstNet Authority. The team captured feedback or suggestions regarding existing FirstNet products and services including the FirstNet app catalog, deployables, network status map within the FirstNet Central, 
Z-access capabilities, and response for FirstNet. All this feedback is informing the FirstNet Authority's input to AT&T and will lead continued product evolution and enhancements. Looking forward, we'll use a similar framework around building and enhancing key stakeholder relationships, sharing the FirstNet experience, and informing the FirstNet product and the network enhancements. We're looking forward to bringing our new committee members to key engagements, either virtually or in person, as appropriate, and we will continue to bring the operational needs back to our organization so that they can inform future product network enhancements and investments where it makes sense. That's our market engagement update, and I'll turn it back to Chair Benjamin. Thank you so much, Jackie. Uh, now we're going to get an update from the Network and Technology Committee. Uh, Madam Chair Moore, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm very much looking forward to chairing the Network and Technology Committee. This committee has and will continue to play a major role in the board, especially as we look toward the future. There are exciting and challenging, challenging times ahead for FirstNet and public safety communications. Since our last readout, there has been great progress and we have achieved major program results. Just a few weeks ago, the committee held an excellent briefing where we were able to receive an overview of the options for migration of the network from 4G to 5G. We were also able to provide strategic guidance on a range of issues, including coverage feasibility initiatives, spectrum opportunities, and emerging technologies. In this committee update, Jeff Bratcher, Chief Network and Technology Officer will provide a readout focused on the following themes. Ongoing momentum in network de deployment, the remarkable growth in network connections, differentiating devices available for public safety users, innovative applications and solutions to operational issues faced by first responders, and recent experience in deployable coverage solutions that benefit public safety. Jeff, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Committee Chair Moore, and I'd like to express a warm welcome to you as chair of the committee, as well as to the new and the returning board members. The team and I look forward to working with you and the other members of the committee going forward. The FirstNet Authority is pleased to share that the adoption of the FirstNet network by our nation's first responders continues to grow at a fast pace, exceeding both the FirstNet Authority and AT&T expectations. The slide that you're seeing here summarizes the FirstNet network momentum. We work with AT&T to update this slide quarterly and share with the FirstNet board. Last month on October 21st, AT&T announced their third quarter earnings and results. Within those results, they shared that the FirstNet built with AT&T network is now providing priority and preemption capable wireless services to more than 2.8 million public safety device connections across more than 18,500 public safety agencies across all 56 states, territories, and Washington, D.C. I'd like to share with the committee and board a few examples of some recent public safety agencies that have adopted FirstNet as their wireless broadband communications platform. The first example is the San Francisco Sheriff's Department, which is now connecting their officers, emergency managers, first responders, and other personnel via the FirstNet network. They are leveraging FirstNet service for situational awareness to assist officers in making critical decisions at incidents to mitigate the loss of life and property. It is also ensuring streamlined communication between regional public safety agencies during mutual aid incidents. A great recent example of a mutual aid event was the use of FirstNet to, to support San Francisco's Fleet Week. Another example that I'd like to highlight is the Florida Division of Emergency Management has recently moved their entire agency to FirstNet services. This agency depends on reliable communications to support and coordinate across the 67 counties in Florida in response to emergencies and day-to-day -day activities. Expansion of the public safety dedicated and FirstNet Authority licensed Band 14 spectrum coverage is proceeding on an aggressive pace. AT&T remains ahead of their contractual deployment dates and metrics. AT&T announced that they have now exceeded the 95% of the contractually required Band 14 spectrum deployment across all 56 states and territories. The FirstNet Authority program management team is now in the process of validating this uh, milestone and providing that with AT&T. The pace in 2021 has accelerated with ongoing challenges of the pandemic 
and an extremely active western wildfire season. The communication needs for these challenges faced by public safety over the past year were supported by over 650 FirstNet mobile asset deployments and network restorations year to date for both planned and emergency events requested by FirstNet public safety users. The slide we're showing here is a new one, and this, again, FirstNet is public safety's network. The public safety community rallied together in 2010 and 11 to lobby Congress for the legislation, legislation to get their own dedicated spectrum and funding to create a nationwide broadband network built for their unique mission critical communication needs. As I stated earlier, the adoption growth of the FirstNet network by public safety has exceeded expectations. This slide illustrates this growth over the last 15 quarters, three years and nine months, going back to Q1 of 2018 when we activated the dedicated FirstNet core network and began adding those public safety users and connections. As you can see, at the end of 2018, we were at roughly 500,000 subscribers and connections. The end of 2019, approaching 1.2 million. The end of 2020, 1.8 million. And as of the third quarter, we're at that 2.8 million connections. We are excited to see where we end 2021 and if we hit that 3 million mark. Certainly part of the reason for this growth is that public safety is utilizing FirstNet to manage daily operations, planned events, and emergency situations and disasters. While commercial wireless offerings are available to public safety, FirstNet continues to grow because we provide dedicated priority and preemption capabilities on not only the dedicated Band 14 spectrum, but also all of AT&T's commercial LTE spectrum bands. This sets the service truly apart from other commercial offerings. Nowhere else does public safety first responders get their own nationwide dedicated communications platform with the mission ready and mission critical standards based communication solutions that they need to protect themselves and our communities. We continue to listen to public safety and focus on delivering the unique communication services that they need on their network. Listening and adjusting plans as new situations arise is part of the FirstNet value proposition. A great recent example is the deployment of end-to-end -end wireless coverage in Glenwood Canyon, Colorado, my home state, and as Warren mentioned, his home state as well. In late summer, multiple large mudslides swept through the canyon, closing Interstate 70, trapping motorists, and destroying most everything in its path. After quickly responded with the dedicated FirstNet deployable equipment to support the coverage needs, more recently, a network of cell sites has now been launched as a permanent wireless solution through the canyon on FirstNet. Next slide, please. As the network and user base expands, the FirstNet Authority is working tirelessly to ensure innovation is a component in new public safety communication technologies and solutions for FirstNet. Prime examples of this include our thriving ecosystems that are delivering the communication devices and applications requested by first responders. We're also investing in and growing unique deployable coverage solutions that provide that differentiated value to public safety FirstNet users. We have a dedicated team of senior standards development engineers that are working tirelessly within the open standards bodies to ensure public safety communication needs do not get left behind in the evolution of future wireless communication technologies and generations. Touching on the devices briefly, as we plan for FirstNet, public safety stressed to us time and again that access to innovative wireless broadband devices was critical. We continue to deliver on this by developing, growing a global device ecosystem so that public safety has choices for their devices. There are now over 380 devices in this ecosystem, and over 80% of those support their dedicated Band 14 spectrum. This is a gain of over 114 devices in the past year. We've also introduced new smartphones, tablets, rugged handhelds, laptops, and a growing wave of public safety relevant Internet of Things devices. You see the logo FirstNet Ready. That means a device has gone through the device approval program within FirstNet and certification by AT&T and acceptance by the authority. And this has access to Band 14 and is compatible with the FirstNet dedicated core network. Increasingly, next generation wireless capabilities, 5G, are now part of the latest wave of devices, positioning our public safety FirstNet subscribers to take full advantage of this generational shift in wireless capabilities. And this is leveraging investments we made last year as we are fast followers for the FirstNet network with what the overall industry is doing. 
by ensuring the first responders have access to the latest commercial off-the-shelf technology via FirstNet, we are also enabling them to take advantage of cost savings and maximize the value of every public safety dollar. We are pleased with the wide and diverse number of devices and moving on to applications we received from public safety, they stressed a robust ecosystem of new applications to address their operational needs. We now have over 180 applications and user solutions in the FirstNet application catalog. And this is geared towards first responders. We have actual first responders developing applications as well to meet their unique needs that are in, listed in the catalog. It's exciting to see the new solutions for public safety and taking advantage of not only the 4G but the 5G capabilities. One application I'd like to highlight in the application catalog is an application that provides approved law enforcement officials with access to the state, local, and federal databases, such as the Criminal Justice Information Services and the National Crime Information Center. The application is designed to be intuitive and easy to operate, leverages strong encryption plus two-factor authentication, and meets all FBI criminal justice information service security requirements. Law enforcement agencies have real-time access to this data from their mobile devices, which allows them to run warrants and driver's license checks right from their Android or iOS devices on FirstNet and get those responses back in seconds on their prior and preemption capable network. Lastly, deployables. One of the unique high value elements of the FirstNet network is the fleet of dedicated deployable coverage assets. These assets are available 24 seven at the request of FirstNet subscribing agencies at no cost to them. The deployable fleet is a unique capability that public safety told us they needed. They want to bring their network with them wherever they are operating. To meet the usage demand, the FirstNet Authority invested in expanding the size and diversity of the existing fleet last year. And that was via a task order under our contract with AT&T. These assets are now fully integrated into the deployables fleet, and there are over 100 dedicated assets now available to the FirstNet subscribers in all states and territories. As noted earlier, this has been an active year with over 650 deployable and network restore, restoral requests from FirstNet users. The numbers bear out here that the extent of deployments and coordination with public safety in response to the western wildfire season and the tropical storms experienced in the Gulf of Mexico and Atlantic regions. To close out my update for the committee, I would like to reiterate that as we have done since the inception of FirstNet in 2012, we will continue to place public safety communication needs and requirements at the center of all of our efforts to plan, build, and reinvest into their nationwide public safety broadband network, FirstNet, built with AT&T. Chair Moore, as the results of this past quarter illustrate, the FirstNet Authority continues our focus on innovation and investment that benefits the unique mission-critical communication needs of our nation's public safety first responders. AT&T continues to be a strong partner and is delivering on their contractual requirements and I look forward to updating on the end of year 2021 results in our upcoming meeting in February. Thank you again, Committee Chair Moore, and I will now turn this back over to Chair Benjamin. Thanks so much for an excellent report, Jeff, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, now we're gonna get an update from the Finance Committee. Uh, Brian Crawford, turn, turn this over to you. Thank you, Chairman Benjamin, and congratulations on your appointment to you and the new board members. I'm very excited to continue my role as Finance Chair and looking forward to working with the new board members. The board's finance committee is responsible for reviewing and providing guidance on the FirstNet Authority's financial matters. Specifically, the committee assures internal controls, independent audits, and financial analysis of the authority. The responsible management of the finances of the FirstNet Authority ensures adequate funds for the annual operations of the authority and for the reinvestments providing for the maintenance, operations, and improvements to the nationwide public safety broadband network. And now I'd like Kim Farrington, our Chief Financial uh, Officer and Administrator, um, to provide a brief financial update. Kim? Thank you, Brian. Good morning. I'll begin with fiscal year 2021 cumulative operations execution. The First Net Authority finished its fiscal year 2021 on September 30th of this year with total cumulative obligations of $77.6 million. We are currently still working through fiscal year end reconciliations, 
with the anticipation of the confirming a few million dollars that will be carried over from our fiscal year 2021 budget. And we will carry that into fiscal year 2022. These funds will be available to support the maintenance, operation, and improvements to the National Public Safety Broadband Network, benefiting our public safety stakeholders. Now moving on to fiscal year 2022 budget execution. Our fiscal year began on October 1st of this year. And this slide illustrates the $12 million of obligations made during the first month of fiscal year 2022. The blue line that you see going up portrays the budget forecast for the next 11 months of this fiscal year with the green line representing our total fiscal year budget. And we will continue to share with you every month our budget execution throughout the fiscal year. That concludes the financial report for today. I'll hand the floor back over to you, Chair Benjamin. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ken and, and uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much uh, for that report. Um, I'm going to slip into the period of committee and board resolutions. Uh, in order to move the organization to the next level and position it for success, there are several resolutions that will be voted on to change the names of three of the four board uh, committees. Um, I'll now ask each of the respective committee chairs to introduce the resolutions and call a committee vote. And we'll start with the Network and Technology Committee. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In acknowledgement of our future focus uh, through this resolution, the Network and Technology Committee would like to recommend that the board change the name of the committee from the Network and Technology Committee to the Programs and Future Planning Committee. Before we vote, do any Network and Technology Committee members have any questions about the proposed resolution? Hearing none, we're prepared to vote on Network and Technology Committee Resolution 12. Madam Secretary, would you please read the operative language? Yes, Network and Technology Committee Resolution 12, Network and Technology Committee name change to Programs and Future Planning Committee. There, now therefore, be it resolved that the Network and Technology Committee approve and recommend that the board adopt the first net authority Network and Technology Committee Charter which changes its current name from the Network and Technology Committee to the Programs and Future Planning Committee, a copy of which is attached here too as Exhibit A. Thank you, Madam Secretary. May I have a motion to approve Network and Technology Committee Resolution 12? This is Paul Patrick, uh, so moved. Thank you, Paul. Is there a second? This is Alexandra Fernandez Navarro. I second it. Thank you, Alexandra. All in favor, say aye. All opposed indicate by saying nay. Are there any abstentions? Madam Secretary, will you please make the following resolution available to the public following this meeting? Yes, I will. Now I'll turn the floor over to Sylvia Moyer, Committee Chair for the Governance and Personnel Committee for the next committee resolution. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Through this resolution, the Governance and Personnel Committee would like to recommend that the Board change the name of this committee from the Governance and Personnel Committee to the Governance and Risk Committee. Before we vote, do, we, do any Governance and Personnel Committee members have any questions about the proposed resolution? Hearing none, we are prepared to vote on Governance and Personnel Committee Resolution Number 12. Madam Secretary, would you please read the operative language? Governance and Personnel Committee Chair, I'm sorry, pers Governance and Personnel Committee Resolution 12, Governance and Personnel Committee Name Change to Governance and Risk Committee. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Governance and Personnel Committee approve and recommend that the Board adopt the first Net Authority Governance and Personnel Committee Charter which changes its current name from the Governance and Personnel Committee to the Governance and Risk Committee, a copy of which is attached here too as Exhibit A. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to approve Governance and Personnel Committee Resolution 12? 
Chair, this is Karema. I move to approve Governance and Personnel Committee Resolution 12. Thank you. Is there a second? Chief Carrizo seconds that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, indicate by saying nay. And are there any abstentions? Madam Secretary, will you please make the following resolution available to the public following this meeting? Yes, I will. I will now turn it over uh, the floor over to Brian Crawford, committee chair for the Finance Committee for the next committee resolution. Mr. Crawford. Thank you, Sylvia. Through this resolution, the Finance Committee would like to recommend that the board change the name of this committee from the Finance Committee to the Finance and Investment Committee. But before we vote, do any Finance Committee members have any questions about the proposed resolution? Hearing none, we prepared to vote on Finance Committee Resolution 29. Madam Secretary, would you please read the operative language for this resolution? Finance Committee Resolution 29. Finance Committee name change to Finance and Investment Committee. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Finance Committee approve and recommend that the Board adopt the first Net Authority Finance Committee Charter, which changes its current name from the Finance Committee to the Finance and Investment Committee, a copy of which is attached here to as Exhibit A. Thank you, Janelle. May I have a motion to approve Finance Committee Resolution 29 from a Finance Committee member? Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Billy Hughes. I move approval of Finance Committee Resolution number 29. Motion made by Mayor Hughes. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, this is Jocelyn Moore. I second the motion. Second by committee member Jocelyn Moore. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed, say nay. Are there any abstentions? Madam Secretary, will you please make the following resolution available to the public following this meeting? Yes, I will. Now I'll turn the floor back over to Chair Benjamin for the board resolution. Thanks, Brian, and everyone else, too. The board's now prepared to vote on Resolution 111 to amend the bylaws to reflect the new board committee names. Uh, before we vote, do any of the board members have any questions about the proposed resolution? Hearing none, uh, we're prepared to vote on board resolution 111. Madam Secretary, would you please read the operative language? Board Resolution 111 Bylaws Amendments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the First Net Authority Board hereby amends the bylaws of the First Net Authority, a copy of which is attached here to as Exhibit A. Thank you. You may have a motion to approve Board Resolution 111. Mr. Chair, this is Billy Bob Brown, Jr. I move to approve Board Resolution 111. Thank you. Is there a second? Yes, this is Warren Mickens. I second the motion. Fantastic. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Are there any abstentions? Madam Secretary, please make the following resolution available to the public following this meeting. Yes, I will. All right. This is a rather efficient operation. <laughs> I never got a city council meeting to run this way, so uh, <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, uh, Janelle. Um, this does conclude our board uh, business for the day. Uh, as we wrap up, I really want to say again what a, a real honor it is to serve uh, on this board amongst uh, such leaders as we focus on delivering the very best nationwide broadband network for our nation's first responders. responders. It's an exciting time to be joining the First Net Authority, and, and this board is ready and well positioned to hit the ground uh, running. Especially uh, grateful uh, to our, our CEO. Uh, Ed Parkinson um, and, and Janelle and the entire First Net Authority staff, really first class uh, for their work and support of this board and day-to-day -day, uh, dedication to serving our public stakeholders. Look forward to working with each of you and this entire uh, great team. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ed Parkinson, our CEO, uh, for any remarks he'd like to, to add to close this out. Ed? Thank you, May. I appreciate that. Good morning to everyone listening and good morning to everyone in the room. Um, I first of all just would like to thank Mayor Benjamin for uh, just the friendship and the relationship we've been able to strike up uh, just in a relatively short period of time. I think the board and the program under his stewardship is in very, very good hands. And I echo that to all the board members, not just those who've been here for a while, but all the new board members. It's just been a privilege to get to know you over the last few days. And I, I know I speak on behalf of 
Lisa and myself and the entire organization just how excited we are as staff um, to see the path going forward under the vision that you all have. So really just couldn't be happier about where we stand. It would also be amiss of me not to thank Tip Olsa Taylor, the outgoing chair, as well as all the other board members who are not reappointed. And I just want to thank them for their dedication to public safety. It's, it's remarkable when you think, going back to our first chair, Sam Ginn, now coming all the way to our fifth uh, chair, Mr. Benjamin, uh, the type of talent that this program has been able to attract, all voluntary, all putting their hands up for you know, the advancement of public safety in this great nation of ours. And to really um, be part of that, albeit a small part, is really an honor. So I just uh, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the project, going back to even uh, when Justin was working for Senator Rockefeller, who was the author of, yeah, of the legislation. As you say, it's come full circle, hasn't it? And uh, remarkable to see that. Um, you know, we've had a remarkable uh, transformation since Jeff had the slides up showing when in 2018 all those numbers were zero. And when you think about uh, the growth that this program has shown, as well as understanding the evolution that this program has taken on, you know, we sit here now in the cusp of 5G with FirstNet ready for 5G, being able to supply those type of services to public safety. And when you think of the fact that so much has been done by such a small group of remarkable people, it, it really does go back to that wonderful, uh, the wonderful beginnings of where we are, but also how excited it is to see the future of the program. We know we have a long way to go. It's a 25-year contract for a reason. We understand that mistakes have been made along the way, but we're thankful for the trust that public safety has been able to put into the First and Authority, and also the commitment that at t has shown. As I said before, no one is perfect, certainly not us, but at the end of the day, we are completely dedicated to achieving uh, the mission that Congress put forward to us, and we're certainly dedicated to that. And as we go forward into 2022, uh, we look forward to potential programmatic reauthorization, spectrum relicense at the FCC. We look forward to have continuing the evolution of the technology and the evolution of the network. Similar to how we think about technology, we all remember the flip phones from the past and uh, probably playing Snake on those Nokia 3310s in our misguided youths. Uh, the games have gotten better in smartphone technology and our ability to provide services to public safety has just taken those leaps and bounds it's quite exciting to think about where we'll sit in just another three years um, and as we approach the, the further advancements in technology along the board. So I, I'd like to thank um, to everyone. I'd certainly like to thank Lisa, my right hand, uh, as we go forward. I'd like to thank Jeff uh, and, and Rich for the partnership and technology and all of management. Um, I, again, I'm just a small part of a much, much more important uh, team that we have at the organization. So a shout out to the FirstNet Authority staff remarkable group of men and women who give up so much to really provide so, so much to public safety. So um, as we look forward into 2022, focusing on the priorities that we have as the enterprise, the contract oversight over AT&T, continued engagement with public safety, it's really what we do, it's front and center of everything that we have at the program, uh, continuing to advance the network and ultimately continuing to improve and advance the culture of what we do inside of First Net Authority, but of course the service that we provide to public safety. So I couldn't be more excited about the opportunity we have in front of us, Mayor Benjamin. My thanks to you, my thanks to all of the board, and uh, really excited to, to get, get our heads down and achieve what we can in 2022. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Ed. Thank you. Um, we're now prepared to adjourn this meeting. Um, I have a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, I present a motion to adjourn the meeting. This Thank is you. Alexandra Fernandez Navarro. Thank you. Is there a second? This is Karima, second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay? No nays? Are there any abstentions? Well, I uh, just want to thank everyone who uh, attended the combined board meeting and the committee's meeting and to the audience who joined us over WebEx today. Our meeting is now adjourned. Godspeed. <laughs>